Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu einer weiteren Folge Chaos at Noah. Und wir sind jetzt hier gerade äh, auf dem Dach vom O-Tower und sind in Anführungszeichen jetzt, stehen jetzt in Anführungszeichen Shogun gegenüber. Und er möchte, dass wir eine Quest für ihn erledigen, um Nanami zu retten. Ja, hm. Uff. I... I didn't want to think about Naomi's death. I didn't want to imagine her dying. I was too afraid that if I imagined it, it would become real. In the end, it doesn't even matter me. <laughs> I relented. I started walking to a spot where I could look down at Scramble Crossing like Shogun had ordered me to. I could barely see where I was going. If I wasn't careful, I could easily trip and fall. On the side of the roof was facing Scramble Crossing, a transparent acrylic plate protruded out and up like a wall. It was about three stories high. As I approached the wall, I could hear the tumult of the crossing below. A single woman's voice caught my ears. It seemed like it was coming from the Jumbotron mounted on a neighboring building. <laughs> I wiped away the cold sweat on my forehead and then moving only my eyes I looked towards the wall. Just as Shogun had said, there was a hole there was a hole where a single person could pass through. It had an unnatural shape in to it, like it had been smashed open. It had clearly been destroyed by human hands. Of course, there was nothing beyond the hole, only a sheer eight story drop leading straight down to the concrete below. <laughs> What had he just said? He couldn't mean. I gulped. Was this how he had gotten the five people to jump off? was exactly as Sarah Tan had said. There was no way out of it. I was going to die. He was going to make me jump down from here and die. <laughs> What the hell was I supposed to do? The problem there is, when er stirbt, can Shogun theoretisch Nanami immer noch umbringen. Das ist so die Sache dabei. Someone save me. I could hear Nami's voice echoing within my panic striking ears. <laughs> oh, I like Nami, she's so knuffig. Memories of Nami smiling happily resurfaced in my mind. She looked so carefree. <coughs> It was all my fault. Nami had nothing to do with any of this. But because of me, she'd gotten kidnapped by Shogun and then he'd cut off her hand. I'm sorry, Nami. I'm so sorry. I wiped away my tears, but that didn't stop them. I wiped once again. Then with my vision still blurry, I slowly approached him and smashed hole. And then more afraid than I'd ever have than I had ever been before I looked down. What the heck? Suddenly a huge sheer akin to the rumbling of the very earth itself came from the people below. A large crowd was gathered in front of the station. The media was there too. They were all they were all there for an event that was about to unfold. Suddenly a blinding light hit me. I squinted I squinted reflexively and looked away. Then when my eyes landed upon the jumbo turn of the closest building, what I saw was unmistakably. Oh scheiße. <laughs> me. Huh? Me? On the Jumbaton was my own face. My own face covered in tears and with my mouth hanging half open like an idiot. My back was hunched too. 
For splitting, I thought I was hallucinating. The children threw me, as I thought that someone was secretly recording me somewhere. Then I considered if I was, and if what was being projected there was actually images taken from my thoughts by Shogun. But after uh, exhausting him every last possible option, I realized that it had to be a live feed of me, right at this very moment, at this very place. And the video playing on the jump button had n even had a new sticker featuring sensation attack lines. Live from the Shibuya Station Plaza, the amazing Asper boy finally makes his debut all day. <laughs> the ticket commenting the situation was situated along the bottom of the screen. The amazing Asper boy endorsed by the psychic of the center, Yuri, Yuri Brightman, appears. Don't miss this one. Where he div divines the new gem perpetrators to identity. After it, I finally understood. I finally understood what the media and the spectators on the screen crossing below were looking at. It was me. Don't look at me. Ich habe irgendwie das, das Gefühl, dass das jetzt sehr wichtig werden könnte. Why? Why were they fixated on me? Asper boy, what the hell was all that about? Did any of them have any idea what had happened today? We had gotten uh, hit by a damn earthquake. A seismic intensity of 5. One over 100, over 100 people have had died. So why? Why were each and every one of them, why they were waiting to just to see an attack freak like me make an ass of himself? Und? Banner uns die Illusion. Mal sehen, ob das eine... Okay, es ist diese Art von Delusion. Es ist die Delusion, die wahrscheinlich nicht so... Also die wahrscheinlich wirklich nur in seinem Kopf abspielt. Shogun. It was most likely him who had brought them here. They were all under his mind control. A lot of them were expecting me to jump off here and die. An overwhelming urge... An overwhelming urge of negative emotions struck me. Tell me, was there anyone on my side? <coughs> Suddenly, among the camera I heard the voice calling my name. <coughs> Rimi! A voice all too familiar. A voice I knew. A voice that belonged to the one and only person on my side. I wasn't in the... It was... And it wasn't an auditorial hallucination either, it was Remy. Remy was calling me from somewhere. Where? Where was she? I searched desperately for her. But there was but there were too many people. It was impossible to identify a single person among all of them, especially from the side. Struck by this bear hanging my head in regret. Inevitably as a consequence of this I ended up looking directly below me. And there I saw the figure of a girl looking up at me wearing both hands. Sieht nicht so glücklich aus. Sehr, sehr schieber's. You had come to save me. <lacht> Happy as could be. And we that I'd been saved and nodded over and over again. My vision was blurred to by tears of joy. I quickly wiped them away. I didn't want to lose sight of Remy for even a single. However. I looked again towards the spot where he was waving from and saw something was wrong. For some reason the crowd around me started surrounding her. With Remy in its center, a clear circle of dark heads began to form. They moved in closer and closer to her, and when she would notice how many do can reach toward Remy and began to jostle her. Hating that was being done to her, she tried to break free from the man made in closer, but due to her sheer number of people were surrounding her, she couldn't even take one step. It was as if she was standing right in the middle of the, the morning train, a claustrophobic nightmare packed to the brim with people heading to work. I could faintly hear the sound of her screams. The number of people surrounding me was gradually increasing, as was the intensity of their behavior. As I pushed her around, they pulled at her clothes and eventually her jacket was stripped away. My prayers were left unanswered. The crowd rushing toward me was still getting bigger and bigger, and her lone resistance wasn't enough to hold them back. Countless mentor of the Hercules pulled her and dragged her onto the road. She disappeared into the sea of people and I lost sight of her. 
like hyenas devouring a dead animal's flesh, more and more Dukins rest in, in for a taste of the body steering around where Rimi had just disappeared. Oh god, oh god, they were going to rape her, they were going to rape Rimi. Duke, the Duke ants who had been brought here, who were being mind controlled by Shogun, were going to ruin her, defiled uh, her with their filthy hands. And after that, after they were done raping her, she would meet a cool merciless end at their hands. Tears started to flow, I bit up my depart. I wasn't crying simply out of sorrow and anger for oh, what was happening to Rimi. I was crying because of the sheer terror I felt once I realized every single person there was my enemy. I was nowhere to run anymore, I was trapped. Okay, wenigstens die Delusion durch. Der Shit war schon übel genug. I was scared, too close, this close to pissing myself. I had never felt so close to death before. Rufen Sie nicht, who's eyes are those eyes? I felt like my consciousness was drifting away. And now I was like a child throwing a tantrum. I started to cry. I hoped that by doing so, Shogun would let me go. I hoped that by doing so, the court below would maybe feel sympathy for me and come save me. I hoped that by doing so, the police would realize I wasn't the culprit, just an innocent otaku freak, and they would come save me. I hoped that by doing so, my parents who would be watching TV at home would come and take my place. I hoped that by doing so, women would m come rushing to save me. I hoped that by doing so, I would suddenly f make, uh, wake up and realize that it was all a dream. Ich finde, das sieht gerade aus wie ein Schwert, muss ich sagen. Fällt mir mal gerade so auf. With this merit of hopes in my mind, I shook my head desperately and then I cried out my soul wish. I don't want to die. And yet... Shogun's tone hadn't changed at all from before. When he said that I froze, I'm able to take a step back, no look behind me. Even if that was true, I... Shogun's voice was real calm, which somehow only made him all the more intimidating. I couldn't even find it in me to say anything back. <laughs> but was I wrong? Then did that mean I didn't have to die? Find my D sword? How? I had been searching for it as hard as I could for a long time, but never even getting close, getting close. It was completely absurd to think I could suddenly find it here just because he had ordered me to. No. Du bist eine Delusion. <lacht> er will never find one. この剣は念を握りこの剣は何気を収束させたためにこの剣は超越した場所に干渉するためのものに行くか also ich habe so den Eindruck, das läuft nicht ganz flüssig rüber. 
同一次元上にあるもう一つの可能性あれ妄想言い方にあまり意味はないわ唯一確かなことこの剣もその領域に存在しているということいつの間にかそこにあった気づかなかったわ最初はでもちょっとだけ見方を変えたら分かったもしかして匠にももう見えているのか見ているだけ世界の疑い仕組みを知るお前の見ている景色は本物か妄想現実にすることが可能だ本当じゃないものが景色に紛れ込むつまりエラーを現実として認識させる<笑>そうだよ。いいぞ、だいきすぎだ、バチ。絶対に多くのヒントが提示されているよね。君にはもう見えているはず。君の眼下に広がっているその景色の中に。So, what he was saying was, uh, uh, Shogun was hiding a deer set somewhere in the scenery where I was looking at, and I just had to find it. There was no way I could do that. If I couldn't move from here, how was I supposed to grab the fucking sword? What they did he even want me to do? But he just said that if I move one step from here, Nanami will die. But he said that I could save her. I strained my eyes. The bright lights from below made it hard to see much of the scenery at all. The further away it was, the harder it was to see. Hey, you said that is over. I was trying as I could to look around, but the scenery I could see from here wasn't all that vast. Most of it was hidden behind buildings, but I had to find my sword. What the hell was I supposed to do? I thought about what I and Sen had said once more. And when I thought about that, for some reason I recalled the pattern of the ceiling in my parents' house. Schwerter. Back when I was a kid, I remembered having random thoughts about it before I had gone to sleep. To m and an auge. To me, the grain of wood on the ceiling had looked somewhat like a face. And once I had seen it that way, I could no longer see it and it as anything else. Hi, hi, men of Sakaku, men of Sakaku, Sonna Mokume, Dokoni, the meat by Aku. She was right. This didn't really compare to what patterns did it. Shogun murmured his tone as detached as ever. そこから切り取る君にはそれができるはい、意味不明そいつは適当言ってるだけだよ妄想は現実にすることが可能だ Just like that, flower bed 
just like when Ayas had, divi had divided herself in two. But the last time I tried to materialize a real desert, I tried using a delusion on the fake one, but it didn't work. I shook my head once more, then scanned the scene visible to me from here. Wie gesagt, da ist was. Oh, quick save. Interessant, I saw a sword. Ja, ich hab das gesehen. Ich speichere mal lieber, weil ich nicht weiß. Ein distinctly tingly sword. Ich mache einfach nochmal ja, weil ich. If I move from here, I can take it. Ich mach mal no, mal sehen, was das ist. Wenn mich das führt jetzt. I can see the sword from other places than here. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. Ich möchte nämlich das mit dem Schwert machen. Ja, komm. Ja. If I move from here, I can take it. Ich mach mal Nein. Mal sehen, was. I can see this word from other places in here. Dann gehe ich mal auf Nein, mal sehen, was, ich, was jetzt ist. It's not actually a sword. Nein, das ist ja ein Schwert. Ja, es war ein Schwert. Aber nein, einfach mal. Nein, mache ich mal. I'll see it. Okay. Damit habe ich das wohl jetzt geklärt. Within the night landscape blurred by my teary eyes. Amid the scenery in which light was wrapped by my welling tears, I found a spot that looked just like a sword. Just like, like, just like what I had said. I had noticed it at first, but when I had ever so slightly altered my perspective, it was there before I knew it. Even if it had just been a coincidence, I was more than happy with it. The more I thought of it as a sword, the more I defined The more defined it became, and over time it was becoming more and more real. It was slowly turning into a definite part of the scenery. And, uh, and eventually even its core contours became clearly distinguishable. Likely having having noticed my chance in the manager when immediately spoke to me. I looked down, I saw the crowd filled with countless people there. Emelian still had yet to arrive, just like back at noon. The response time was far too slow. Not that, not that it was surprising, that, that was just how damaging the earthquake this morning had truly been. <laughs> Ich 
Could I really do that? If I just reached out, wouldn't would that thought become mine? If so, then should I at least give it a try? I guess I had said that my this would bring me salvation. Maybe those words n were referring to exactly what was happening now. I will grasp the thought, complete the quest, bring none of me home safe and sound, and have Shogun leave me alone forever. And then I would return to my peaceful life that I had been living up until now. Even Shogun wouldn't make me do the impossible. I could do it. He wouldn't tell me to do it if it was if I wasn't capable of. I'm sorry, Sultan, but I'm already reaching for my salvation. The court below started rumbling. My every move was being monitored by the, by the thousands of people packed in front of the station. And it wasn't just them, I was also being watched by tens of not hundreds of thousand people all over Japan watching live on TV. I started feeling nervous. The extreme pressure imposed by such a large number of people made my heart feel like it could explode at any second. No, just forget about them. If I stayed focused on them, I would be too nervous to even lift a finger. I need to focus only on the sword. Being as careful to maintain my footing as possible, I reached my hand out. I tried to aim directly at the sword, letting my intuition do the rest. I felt nothing. The wind was toward me relentlessly. On top of that the direction, it was coming <coughs> Sorry, it was inconsistent. One second it was blowing at me from the front, the next it pushed me from the side. I clung to the accrual plate in an attempt to support me, but it was too slippery to bring me anything more than emotional support. If I let my, my guard down even slightly, I would get blown off. Even so, I was still trying definitely to grab the sword, but no matter what I tried, I didn't, I didn't succeed. Tears went up once more. My vision blurred and what had once appeared to be an object similar to a third began to lose its shape. I quickly wiped my tears away at the feeling that once I lost sight of it, it wouldn't appear ever again. Fuck you, you don't know how it feel how this feels. I bit my lip to hold back the tears, leaned forward more than I've ever tried to and finished around the and fished around in the open air with my hand, but I still couldn't grasp the sword. If I fail from here. I looked down once again, I was higher than I had thought it was. I felt dizzy, so I pulled back and clung to the acrylic plate once more. If you don't, you won't. Yeah. I shouldn't have looked down. I couldn't stop shaking. I said I, you wouldn't see Nanami for a very long time. That means I told him I would Nanami one day see him. Nur that would be very long time. I couldn't stop shaking. I thought I was going to slip because of it. I was so uh, really afraid. <laughs> Oh god, I don't wanna die. I had no choice but to try again. I leaned out through the hole and extended my arm. I could still see the sword over there. I tried again and again, but of course nothing happened. It felt like I could reach it. It, but for some reason I just couldn't do it. I leaned out even farther. I stretched my hand out as fast as I could, reaching out with my entire body to try and grasp the sword. Even, I even straightened out my fingertips. And then I slowly closed my hand. But just like every time before it, I felt nothing. <laughs> it was impossible, just like Seratan had told me it was. There had never been a way for me to grab the translucent sword. Perspective. I had made it look normal sized, but when I actually thought about it, I realized how enormous it actually was. 
It wasn't a size human could realistically carry. Right, then Seraton Snaki whisper reached my ear. Am I sure I can do it? Do what? その間に自分の意思でまた花壇を出現させる。タッキーがそんなすごいことできる今まで一度も自分で意識してその力とかっても使ったことないっしょ。あんま何見てきてこれ、なんか<笑><笑> I had no idea how to use them. Okay, jetzt ist wieder. Das. An dem Punkt will ich dann jetzt diese Folge beenden, weil das leider allein ein etwas zu lange dauert. Ich hatte eigentlich. Gehofft dass, gehofft, dass wir das Schwert noch in die Hand bekommen in dieser Folge, aber ich befürchte, dass das noch etwas zu lange dauert bis dahin. Da bedanke ich mich fürs Zuschauen und bis zum nächsten Mal. Ciao!